morning.
good because my sin has been washed away through the blood of Calvary. And I love Jesus this morning. I'm glad to be able to think about the cross and think about the things that have happened in my life and your life this morning. We're here because of what Jesus done on that cross. He made the way. He made the way. Let's welcome Sister Maria. She comes this morning. We're going to say go back here on the hook here. Praise God.
side. Now we'll take one from the edge. Thursday. I was as close as you can go. In the middle of the intersection, the cars come up I-95, and it was my fault. I pulled right up. <laughs> Could you believe that all lanes were clear, and both the cars that come out were around me? And I just give God the praise this morning. Because I believe that when we pray, it's not just that we pray and it stays there. God hears it. And it goes forward. And it keeps us protected. So why do we pray? This is a new one. I'm going to try it on you today. I might mess it up. I hope you get uh, annoyed. That's right.
28 of the Full Armor of God series. And so it's time for us to share our scripture with you guys. So we're going to come through and start. They're going to say it. They can say it by themselves. They get promise. So they are excited about today. And that's all I've heard about was, um, when are we doing it? When are we doing it? When are we doing it? What did you bring? That was evident. Um, that was important, too. So, you ready to say it? You want to go first, Liam? stage fright. That's okay. Y'all y'all are scary sometimes. I'm telling you. I keep telling y'all when I go up. Give me five. Give me a good kid. All right. Y'all give around. Like that, and we're in a day when all of the above are under attack. 
all of the above have to struggle against things in this world so that the best we can be a support and help, we want to do that. Um, I did a very smart thing. I told Colin to remind me of something, and um, he was good to his work. <laughs> he did remind me because I didn't want to. I didn't want to forget this because I love highlighting what goes on outside of the walls of the church, especially accomplishments and notable events that happen in our in our congregation of life. And I need to talk about Dawson this morning. Dawson, if you'll please stand. They are the Lakelands champions. Join the district. Oh, great. You know, you get to start all over. I know how that feels. You win one, you think you're over, but no, just to the next one. So we pray God's blessings and the character that I've seen out of, out of those kids. I pray the character more than anything else will be shown in this environment because God gives us many platforms, but He wants us to show one thing no matter the platform Him and all of His glory and all of His beauty. So I'm very, very proud of them. Uh, Dawson McDonald and all that he was, um, all he's accomplished. Um, Josh will throw you some uh, privilege. He's a good job too, you know. But you know, now we are appreciative. He's a, he's a good coach and a good part of, of the entire environment, keeping it what it should be. Because you ever heard about it? Some people misbehave during these things. Some parents, the parents I hear are kind of bad sometimes. I don't know if y'all heard that. But that's, I think that's scandalous. So I don't know. I, maybe we need coaches for the stands and coaches on the field. But the ones on the field have the easiest time in the world. It's the ones that have to handle the parents. Lord have mercy on them. But um, we're thankful. We're thankful that all the uh, opportunities that we can to show Jesus in every area. So uh, kudos to that. All right, let's stand. Let's. Um, I want to. I want us to read from the Word of God. But I want us to make our our um, declaration before the Lord. <laughs> Um, because we can approach the Word of God many different ways, and some do. But the best way is to say, Lord, I hear and I obey. Miss Jackie talked about our praying. If we're not going to listen to Him, why don't we pray to Him? If it's only a one-way conversation, what's the point? Because you're not in a position to dictate. You're in a position to hear and to obey. And out of His graciousness, we're get, we, get a, we get a little spoiled sometimes and think we can just go about asking without listening, but we need to hear from the Word of God today. I need to hear from the Word of God today. Amen. And I believe we're all the same way. So from the book of Psalm 119, I put this commitment for you. Please repeat after me. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep His testimonies. Blessed are those who keep His testimonies. Who seek Him with the whole heart. Seek Him with the whole heart. They do no iniquity. They do no God help us. You don't have to think that one. They walk in His ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wonder from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart. That I might not sin against God. God Almighty, we ask that your Holy Spirit will speak to us now. Thank you for what you're doing. Because God, I'm not coming to you as if I'm wanting you to actually start working. God, I come to you in the midst of your labors. In the midst of all that you are doing. And I'm saying thank you, God for all that you do and for all that's coming ahead that we can't see yet that you've already worked out. This Word to us is a part of that. So God, may we receive the Word that has been apportioned for us today and dear God, may it strengthen our hearts, may it bless us and keep us, dear Heavenly Father, in your perfect will. And we thank you for your Spirit and your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I want us to look today at Psalms 40. As we have been talking between mothers and fathers today about the struggles that really both have, but I wanted to start with mothers, kind of gravitate toward men, but they are applicable to both ways. They're not really gender or uh, office specific, but they are what I think parents need, but I think you can apply the male or female as well. Uh, I just want to focus on our families because um, I can't underestimate how important our families are. And I, I know we've got all kinds of families, and I'm thankful for that. But families are very broken today, more broken than they ought to be. 
I just, I just last night, and people turned around because I was so shocked, but a couple of people that I have I graduated with and probably been married for about 30 years, I hear they were getting a divorce. And it just broke my heart. I know both of them. I saw them dating. I saw them. And one of them was the, one of the first people I ever met from homes and really was that agent to help me to make that decision to go there. And it, I mean, it just absolutely broke my heart. And, and that, should, that should happen more, church. When love is broken, it ought, to, it ought to pain us. We ought to say, oh, well. You know, that's just, no, that's cynical. It ought to hurt when love fails. For whatever reason, I'm not saying why it fails or it's not just, I'm not saying that. But God never intended for love to do anything but never fail. That's His intention. So we as the church, we need to pray for our families. And I, I guarantee you've got a request right now that you can say, pray for my family for this reason. That's important prayers. Don't ever underestimate those prayers um, because they, they, they do matter. And, and God is at work. Um, I told you, my cousins, have, have, have they, they have a, a, a family where they adopted someone. I saw that process. Beautiful process. I've gone to courtrooms for a lot of reasons. That was the best reason I've ever gone to one. I felt the best ever coming out of the courtroom after that. Just found out they're expected. So God said, okay, we're just going to really show you what they I just love God's work. It's so beautiful. It's to be celebrated. That's why we need to highlight those, but also pray for those who are in less than perfect situations and pray for God's grace and blessing to be there. So we're looking at Psalms chapter 40. And I want to highlight this entire psalm because some people start at the first few verses. And I am glad that it's a whole, a whole chapter, not just a few verses. Good to see you, Connor and Samantha. You make Chad look better sitting there. Glad to have you. Okay, he makes you look better. I could go that way. I'm not talking about Samantha because you. Psalm chapter 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined to me. He heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on a rock, established my steps. He put a new song in my mouth. Praise be to God. That's where people stop. That's not the song, church. That's good word. That's a good word. I've heard so many good sermons on that one, but that's not the song. It continues. Many will see it and fear and will trust the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside the lies. Many, O oh Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened Bird offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me, I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips. O Lord, you yourself know, I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have not declared your, I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. Still good, but still not done. Do not withhold your tender mercies from me, O Lord. Your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have surrounded me, out of the pit and now surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore, my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O oh, oh Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion which seek to destroy my life. Let them be driven backward and brought to dishonor who wish me evil. Let them be confounded because of their shame who say to me, Aha, aha. Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let such as love your salvation say continually, The Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Yet the Lord thinks upon me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay my God. That's kind of a change from the first part of the song. 
But what I want to talk about today is help dad has lost his purpose. I have highlighted to you last week that there, there is a cultural shift going on and, and, and fatherhood, male dominated spaces, and really the male character is under assault. Um, and I don't, I don't really want to pick sides because I think God, God created both genders and I do mean both genders. He, um, he created them for a purpose and for a plan. He didn't mean for them to be one and the same. He meant it for them to be different. He meant for them to have their special part. He meant for them to be who they're going to be. And yeah, men, that don't work for you. I don't understand them and they don't understand you. That's just the way God works. Because if, if from God's perspective, if you're going to look more, what does God look like? You've got to have both male and you've got to have both female. But our society in its sin nature does not like that. We want to define it our way. We want to say we can monkey around anyway. We can do whatever we want to because we are free. We are the 21st century people. We can do anything. I think not. But that's a fake statement that, I, that, that the fruit will be born out either way. But men, I think, because of assault and, and because sometimes of their own accord, they lose what's important in life. A lot of men have lost their purpose. They've lost what it means to be a man. What it means to, to really follow the pattern of what God has for them. And some people will even say that. And you've probably heard it yourself. I wish men would be men again. But what's interesting is people mean different things by that statement. Some people mean, well, I want to be rugged. I want to be tough. I want to be strong. I want to take charge. That's what some people mean. Some people mean, well, I want him to be compared. I want him to be caring. I want him to be compassionate. I want him to be supportive. Those men would be men. So, they want different things, and sometimes men, I, I felt to myself, well, what should I be? Can I tell you, the people around you don't have the answer. There are needs around you, and those needs, as a man, you have to approach. I understand that, but I believe God has the direct purpose for your life, for my life, and for every life that He has created on this earth. So I think rather than answering other people's questions about what a man's purpose is, we should say, God, what is my purpose? And I think the importance of that shows in everyday life, both in the way life is lived well and when life is not lived so well. I have been disturbed of reading, and it's hard for me to read this, this, this current book that I'm reading. I'm listening to it because I, I don't think I can work through its pages. But it's, it's called The Religion of Sports, and it's, it's really tough. It's Deepak Chopra, who is a New Age guru from India, he's a whacked out guy from my perspective, lost me. But he loves the New Age spirituality and just clamoring all together. The, the syncretism that I talked about always. Oh, he loves all that stuff. So his son picked up on that and he got together with Tom Brady and he got together with, with um, oh, I'm, I'm forgetting his name from the Giants. Um, it was on NBC. They started a website called The Religion of Sports. And it highlights uh, how religion is like sports. Sports is really a kind of religion. It has its sinners, it has its saints, it has its comebacks, it has its redemptions, it has all that. And I, I saw, look at Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback in the that has ever lived, not Packers or Cowboys, sorry. Um, but the greatest quarterback ever lived, he feels like there's nothing more important than sport in his life. Nothing more important. Now, I guess he's upgraded now, so I guess Hertz commercials are the upgrade from being the greatest quarterback of all time. I don't know how that works, but that's where he is right now. But they have a newsletter, and, and, it, and it keeps disturbing me. You know what the newsletter's called? The Word. Where they talk about the Word being made flesh. And I'm thinking, these are real people. Michael Strahan, I do I remember his name. They started the religion of sports. To be so accomplished, but to miss your purpose. He's not married anymore, by the way. He's had to sacrifice a lot of things. I'm reading in the book. He could never get over the Super Bowl. He'd start to go back to study. He'd start studying tape constantly. And actually, he could run faster than he did when he started. He accomplished a lot. But it's all come to an end. And now he's in his 40s. What's he going to do with the rest of his life? That'll be interesting to watch. Because if that's his religion, his religion just got taken away from him. So what will he do? It's interesting to see that. It's not, it's not been handled well by many people. We will see it played out before our eyes. But to go that far, to make what you love your religion, I think, hints at what our real purpose is, but it also misses the point of what the life of, that we've been given is really all about. 
Harvard Business Review kind of in a roundabout way agrees with, with my statements here. It talks about the lack of uh, feeling satisfied in the great accomplishments that they've made. One study found that 72% of successful entrepreneurs suffer from depression. 72%. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of high-level CEOs. And a CEO may be depressed at more than double the rate of the public at large. So hopefully nobody wants to be a CEO because, wow, you better be getting ready for some psychological bills so that they can help you through your depressions that you're going to face. It. He says the reason this happens is because we tied our achievement with our sense of success. The insatiable goals, he says, to acquire more, to succeed, and to be as attractive as possible lead us to objectify one another. And I love his word here. He says we become cardboard cutouts of real people. They're talking about successful people, high-level people who have accomplished much but feel so dissatisfied. Now, unfortunately, he's, his, his counsel is that we just need to change the measurement tools. But I want you to even listen to what he says it should change to because it might sound a little familiar to you who are used to the church. He says we need to shift from comparison to compassion. Hmm. I wonder who taught us that. We need to shift from counting to contribution. Ooh, it's better to give than to receive. Somebody I know, somebody I know said that. And instead of personal scorekeeping on the what he calls the hedonic treadmill, that's a fancy word, is I want to do what I want to do and I keep pursuing it, but I always fall back to where I was before I achieved it. So it's, it's an endless cycle. You never really get there. I accomplish it, feels real good, and then I come right back to right where I was. He said, instead of doing that, counting money, trophies, or followers, take a stock of where you've made contributions, who you've touched and made an impact on. You know, I know that's all philosophical jargon, but it sounds a lot like to me he's trying to be Bible adjacent. When 2,000 years ago, the Word of God already said, it's not about what you accomplish, it's about what you give. It's not about what you acquire, it's about your compassion, it's about your life being lived for others. We have been told these truths that they picked up on in the Harvard Business Review does not add credence to it. They simply understand what they can't put words to, that God has a purpose for us, and if we don't fulfill God's purpose, no matter how successful we are, we will be dissatisfied. If you felt dissatisfaction, it doesn't feel good. You feel like I worked so hard for this, so where's, where's my feelings? I've raised my family. I've accomplished this many years. Why don't I feel better? Because the problem is we lose our purpose when our occupation is our purpose. We have a job to do, and that's an important. We should do our job. But your occupation is not your, your personhood. God made you before you took an, an occupation. So your occupation cannot be the same as who you are. Let me meddle just a little bit more. You will find that you lose your purpose when the raising of your family becomes who you are. Is that important? Absolutely, fundamentally important. But I believe the mob also takes care of family too, don't they? Now nobody would put a stamp of approval on that, but they do what we say we do, they just take care of family. But we realize sin can corrupt everything. And that can be so important that even Jesus said, when he said to him, your mama's outside. He says, my family's inside this room. So he said, does that mean he's not going to take care of family responsibilities? Absolutely not. But he said, my purpose comes from the Father, not from my mother. It comes from what I'm called to do, not the things that I must care for in this life. Purpose cannot come from the things of this life. Our purpose shouldn't come from society. Our society is messed up, have you noticed? There are some crazy people. And I'm talking about not the ones living beside you. There's some crazy people out there. Well, I think people are overall, I think overall people are good. Do you still believe that? Get on TikTok for 10 minutes. 10 minutes is all it'll take to realize, God have mercy, we're in a mess. Our purpose cannot come from other people. It cannot come from society. It will never satisfy. But there's someone 
who's worked very hard to show us what our purpose is. And that is God. Yes. That's how this psalm started. <laughs> who is who's David going to talk about? He says, I want to talk about the Lord who answered my cry. I was stuck. Just like you may feel stuck. I was purposeless. I was in a pit. I couldn't get out. I couldn't move. I couldn't function. I was stuck. But somebody Amen. reached down to me. Somebody Amen. come to my rescue. Somebody reached down and had the strength to pull me out and to get me. Not just that of the pit. I was stuck in the miry clay. Stuff was hanging on to me. It was holding on to me. It would not let me go. But when God stretched out his hand, he showed me I am not a pit dweller. I am not a miry clay dweller. I am one that dwells upon a rock because that's where he set me. And when he set me there, something happened on the inside. Instead of complaining about the pit, I started singing about the Savior. I started singing about the glories of my God. I bet you did too. I bet when God got a hold of you, something stirred inside of you, and you just couldn't do anything else but start humming or start singing or start being a whole lot nicer. Because something changed. You were brought out. You were delivered. God did that for you, and that's just the start. Why did God do that? That's what I, that's the important part about the song. So many people stop it. I'm on the rock and I'm singing. Praise his name. Praise his name. How many of you know we come off that time of high? We do. Preachers don't tell you that? Well, shame on them. You don't stay there. You've got to walk. You've got to function. You do have to do requirements in life. And that's what happened to him. He began to move and, and he found out life's still tough outside of the pit. Stuff will still happen to you outside of the pit. But this, this totally demolishes the belief that the reason God saved me was to make me happy and successful. Some preachers will tell you that. See, he saved you and now he's just going to bless you and 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 bless you. If you read the Psalm 40, because I think you stopped off at a few verses short. I just read to you, we started praising the Lord. He put praise to my mouth. His last words is, don't delay in rescuing me. Yeah. Don't delay in helping me. So he's in trouble again. He's surrounded again. And he's feeling sins that are holding him down. He's feeling enemies that are coming against him. He feels like he is in trouble again. He is not, I'm not back in the pit. I'm facing another trial. So if God meant for us to be happy, why does He not happy? If that's what God saved us for, then why doesn't He keep us there? Because that's not what He saved us for. Joy comes from deliverance. But He says there is only one place where bliss will be unending. And it's not here. It's in eternity. So He saved us for something greater. We have it handed to us, but again, we probably don't hear it. And, it. and again, we've kind of got to go to our Lord. I told you all these problems are mixed in together with the Lord's answer. And the Lord has an answer for us. He says, after all of these things, I'm blessing the Lord. I'm trusting in Him. All of these things. He says, you know what? You don't really want sacrifice and offering. It's, it's not really about those, those, those things, those symbolic things that I can do. It's not about bringing a ram or bringing a sheep or bringing a, a gorgeous bull. That's not really what this is all about. It's not about traditions. It's about something deeper. You've opened my ears and now I understand from verse 7 and 8. I have come to do your will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now who embodied that statement much more than David did. After David got out of the pit, man, he stubbed his toe. He stubbed his family's toes. He stubbed the nation's toe. He did a whole lot of messing up after that. He didn't perfectly embody that. He did not always do God's will. He didn't. Satan used it. Again, read the, read the scriptures. That's, that's sad to think. You could be brought out of the pit. You could be delivered and still be used for a wrong purpose. Yep, that's scripture. Peter can say, you are the son of the living God. And then he said, oh, you're never going to go to the cross. Satan, get out of his mouth. 
Don't, don't speak to me like that. This is us. When we miss our purpose, we lose what's important. He said, David said, I know I've been revealed what it's all about. It's not about the sacrifices. It's about doing your will. Amen. There is one that fulfilled it and was picked up on the scriptures. John 4, 34. Jesus is sitting by a well. And he is smiling from ear to ear. A woman just ran away from the well. And they're wondering, what in the world is Jesus doing? He's, he's meeting a woman at the well. And she's running away. What in the world? And he said, Master, you want, you, you want something to eat? He said, I got food. <laughs> Have food that you don't know about. You see, food is of this world. It fulfills a purpose here. But he says, I've got food that you don't know about. Let me tell you, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work that he's done. Jesus fully embodied that verse. So Jesus is our example. Jesus had a family. Jesus had an occupation. Jesus had a society. But what purpose did he follow? Father, what do you want? My Lord, what do you want me to say? Here's the words of Jesus. He says, um, you will know that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father teaches me, I speak these things. In John 5, 17, my Father has been working till now, and I have been working. If I do not the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do the works of my Father, believe. Believe the works that you may know that I am. The Father is in me and I am in Him. He says, I speak, I do, I work all about the Father's will. And it came to a head in Gethsemane. You know this passage so well. It was Jesus and all the purposes that were lined up against it. What will I do? What was His words? Church, you know it. Not my will, but your will be done. And He fulfilled it. It didn't stop in the garden. On the cross. Even when the Father has turned His back against them. He says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And even in that dark atmosphere, He says, Father, into Your hands I commit my spirit. Did that feel right? No. Did it feel good? No. But He was committed to fulfilling the purpose God gave to Him and He when he said it is finished, it was not just for you and me. He finished it. Praise be his name. He finished it because if he didn't finish it, you can't finish it. If he didn't do it, you can't do it. Because Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm going to come back to you. And I will fill you and I will give you power to overcome all the power of the enemy so that you can do greater works than you've seen me do. Somebody needs to thank God in this house because your purpose has not been by your circumstances or your past, God Almighty has called them and says, I have a purpose for you. Yes. And you must fulfill it. Yes. You must fulfill it. Amen. That's what he did. So, so how was that purpose in, in, his, in, his, in his good ways fulfilled? Jesus did it. But David also tells us as well. He says, I can't recount all the stuff that you've done for me. But he tried some ways like Brother Jared. You'll keep doing it. He says, I do not hide. I proclaim the good news of righteousness, and I do it in the great assembly. I don't mind telling people that my Jesus is good. I don't mind telling people what Jesus has done for me. You see, it's not about whether they like me. It's about whether they know the truth. We go to Hardee's, and that's wonderful, but I think those people at Hardee's need to know there is not men gathered. There's people following Jesus Christ meeting on Tuesday morning saying, this is more important than biscuits or anything else because Jesus is real and everybody needs to follow. And we do that. It's funny to see people. They get confronted in Hardee's. They're not used to that. They just used to get hamburger and biscuits going about their business. But, we, but, but we'll get frisky and we'll say, you ought to come to church. It's funny seeing them. It's like, it's like the, you don't have to be a sinner in church. You can be a sinner in heart. They lose their tongue. They're confronted. God is at Harvest. But God's at Walmart too. God's in the street. God's everywhere if we fulfill His purpose. If I'm going to Walmart and all my purpose is me, you know what I'm going to say? Get out of my way. You people bother me. Where is the help around 
around here. There ain't nobody here. There's a lot of things I'm going to talk about because that's my priority. But if my priority is that Jesus has called me to nothing in my life is an accident, then I better look for an opportunity around me to share Jesus Christ because that's my purpose. My purpose is not even to pastor. Me. My purpose is to follow Jesus Christ. That's why I have pastored multiple churches. Not because I'm looking, as one preacher told me, I'm looking to keep moving up. God forbid. <laughs> And you hear about those CEOs? The more you get them, the, 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 uh, 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 I, I just want to be where God wants me. I have to follow His will. So do you. Because you have a purpose. And it's not your occupation. It flows through your occupation. It's not your family. It flows through your family. It's not your society. It flows into your society. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Something has happened in you that's got to cover everything you do. That is our purpose. To magnify the Lord. And so that's, that's what he says here, here at the end. He says, magnify the Lord. That's, that's, that's the praise statement. That's the statement we all need to make. Magnify the Lord. We all understand this. To make God bigger because of our lives. Is God bigger because of you? I'm not talking about His nature. He's immense. But people are looking at you. Is God bigger because of you? Is God known because of you? Do they know His love because of you? Do they know His compassion because of you? Do they know His justice because of you? Do they know His passion and love for people because of you and His, his patient care of you? Does He know? Do people know that? You. Because they should. And I'm not trying to put a burden on you. I'm just trying to highlight your purpose. Your purpose is to reveal God to this world. Not your family, your society, your occupation. God in this world. I mean, we highlight one more time since I talked to you about a, a, a football player who has made his occupation his God or his religion. I have to remind you of Harrison from the Chiefs. Oh, he's still, he has still got this country in an uproar. A kick. I heard he's made, been made captain of the team. So it just galls them. How dare you? I mean, movie stars are putting stuff on TikTok. They're saying, how dare you say stuff? It really has gotten under their skin. And all he's saying is that what God wants is more important than what the world wants. Don't pursue the things of the world more than the things that God has given you to enjoy. And he was talking to a bunch of Christians. He wasn't talking even to the world. But to hear the truth so calls them that Jesus is revealed because they don't hate Him. They hate the God that He serves. Amen. And it's the same will be for you. But honestly, Not comfortable. I'm not talking about being mean for me. He was in no way. I mean, you could read everything he said. It was nothing unkind at all. But the truth offends. And it should offend. There was another video as I come to a close. This girl, to be kind, she was, she was obesely overweight. But she had to get online and, and announce how horrible her doctor was. But yeah, really? Oh, oh, for the time when we minded our own business and kept it to ourselves. But no, 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 she's got to tell the world. This doctor was so bad because that doctor didn't ask for pronouns. Okay. <laughs> and the doctor said, I've got to go on medicine because I've got too much weight on me. My doctor's fat loaded. I went to another doctor, though, and they're so wonderful. Just ask me how my day was. Ask me how my programs were. Ask me all these things. And, and just, just, oh, just, just cared so about me. I like that doctor. Can I tell you something? That poor girl's going to die. Because her doctor just said the sin that she's doing to her body that's unchecked and she has no desire to check it whatsoever, it's going to kill her. Who's the better physician? The one who follows the times, because that's the purpose. Now, follow whatever the follow whatever the, the model is, whatever people are saying. That, that's what you should do. Or to tell the truth. I don't know about you, but I don't want a doctor pat me on the back. I want a doctor to tell me the truth. 
However it is, tell me the truth because I depend on it. If you don't tell me the truth, I don't trust you. Christians, I want you to be trusted. That even if people in your family, society, or whatever don't like you, when they need something, they know the name that comes first to their mind. If they need a God, they don't come first to church. Because can I tell you, people don't do that. I don't have people knocking on the outdoor. Please let me come in. But they will come to somebody they know is a believer and say, will you pray for me? That's the people they might not admit they trust. But they know how to get a hold of God. Because they know it in that person. Would you stand with me? What is the purpose? Psalms 40.16 Let those who seek you rejoice. Amen. Let us rejoice. Don't be gloomy faced seeking the Lord. You're seeking the wrong one. Seek the devil. It'll make you miserable. Seek God. Rejoice. Let such as love your salvation. Without being sentimental, can you just tell me, do you love your salvation? I know. I know what I am without Him. I know what that looks like. You don't, but I'm not going to tell you either. But I know how it's like, and it's, it's not pretty. I hate it. So I know what it's like in me. I love what He's done to me. I love His purposes for me. And I love that even though I'm not perfect, somehow what He has promised still comes true. Praise be to His name. I love His salvation. So what does He say? Let those who love my salvation say continually, Lord, be magnified. That's our purpose, fathers. Men, mothers, ladies. That's our purpose. If you need to come to the altar, please come right now. We're going to pray for special needs in just a moment. But can we bow our heads and receive the Word of God right now? Receive it. What in the Scriptures spoke to you? What is Jesus saying to you? Because I don't, I don't know that we're all in the same place, struggling exactly the same way, but the, the, the truths I've highlighted here are very important. God did not, did not save you just to make you happy. It will take many days. You're going to be sad. But that everything's going to be for a purpose now. Everything. He works all things together for good. That's, that's a purpose that He has started in you, and He will complete it. I just told Michael that today. He's, he's had 1,500 or 5,000 T-cells most ever poured into his body. So he's got another work week. That's one of our prayers. But I sent him this beautiful picture of a diamond. He will begin. He will complete. That's his end of his purpose. I, I don't do it all. I just follow his purpose. That's true for you too. The devil keeps telling you you're a lump of coal. God says you're my diamond. But I found diamonds can be used as beautiful jewelry or you can put it on the end of a hammer and hammer away at whatever you want to. That's not what it's for. You have a purpose for God. Make sure you fulfill that purpose. No matter what you do or what platform God gives you, fulfill that purpose. Let's pray for that end. Father, we just ask you, Holy Spirit, Comforter, Paraclete, God, Director into all truth. Reminder of our hearts. All that Jesus said and did. Lead us on, oh God. One of the modern worship songs I love. Lead on, good shepherd. Lead all my days. Lead me. Because God, I get astray. God, I focus on this. And I focus on this task. And I focus on that fire that I got to put out. I focus on all these things. And God, in the midst of the busyness, I get the purpose of God all <coughs> Some are even more gets more serious than that. They've lost their way. They're so consumed by addictive qualities of this life that they can't see anything other than that thing they're pursuing. And they think if I get that thing, accomplish that thing, arrive at that thing, then everything will be perfect. God, they're setting themselves up for a great letdown. They will get there, hopefully. But dear God, when they get there, they'll find it's not as satisfying as they thought it would be. Something's still missing. Something's still empty. Money's not going to do it. Power, position's not going to do it. Accomplishment's not going to do it. Success is not going to do it. What's going to do it? Fulfilling why we're created. That's what we're doing. And God, we don't have
have to be rich, influential, powerful, or any of those things to do that. We simply have to do what Jesus did. Whatever you say, Lord, I will say. Whatever you do, Lord, that's what I want to do. So lead me in God. All who pray that prayer, oh God, would you hear and would you answer that fundamental prayer of our heart? For everything else is colored by that. God, I pray that we keep singing that song. We keep, we keep claiming the rock that we stand on. But let us understand, trouble's coming. Difficulties still arise, not because our purpose has gone off track, but because that is part of our purpose. We're going to sing in the seasons of wellness. We're going to sing in the times of sickness. We're going to sing in the times when it's hard. We're going to sing in the times when it's not. We're going to sing when, the, when everybody's doing it around us. We're going to sing when nobody's doing it around us. Because our purpose is not tied to our environment or our situation. It's tied to a God who pulled us up out of that pit and who put a song in our mouth that's beyond measure in this world. So, Father, do this work in our hearts. We pray, and all any who don't know that they should trust you, truly trust you with their lives. May today be the day, yeah, I give you all, Lord, including my mess. I, I'm tired of trying to fix it for you. I just hand the broken pieces to you and say, God, whatever you can do, do it. Oh, what a wonder you will work. So for any of those, dear God, may they pray, Lord, forgive me of my sins, my errors, my evils. God, take me and make me what you want me to be. Save me, give me a song, and let me know the path of heaven is greater than the path behind me. Would you do these things, O Lord, in Christ? <coughs> As we close in your service today, we thank you for the word of God that was brought, the time to worship your holy name. We thank you as we go forth throughout this week, God, to, to remind us just of all the things that you have promised us, the, the guidance that you gave David. He was up and down with character. He, was, he had a lot of highs, and we also had some lows, God. And just like us, we can relate to that because we have highs and we have lows in our lives. As we come before you humbly, Humble us, God, whatever it takes. And that's a hard prayer to pray because when we say that, what might happen may scare us to death. But sometimes that's what exactly what needs to happen. We have to be humbled before the throne and we have to know that you are on the throne. That we belong to you, God. We have accepted you into our lives and our lives belong to you. And because of this, we would face things that other people don't. We will go through things that other people don't have to face. Because when we call on your name, when we pray, Proclaim our faith in you. We'll face those who hate you. They don't hate us, but they hate you. And because you're in us, they, they can't help but have troubles and trials when they see us. You are God. Let our lives be the light of the world. Let what we say bring life. Amen. Let what we live out bring life. Because you have given that life to each and every one of us. God, just let it be breath in our lungs. But let it be so much more. Because we are all cold whether we Jesus. Whether we actually will say yes to that or not. Yes, we have been called. We are called to salvation, yes. but we are yes. called to yes, so much more. Yes, we are. Yes. Let your life pour out of us. Let your love endure us. Let your love, let us endure others. Holy God, you are worthy of it all. We thank you. We praise your holy name. King of kings and Lord of lords. We are yours. Come and rest on us. Holy, holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.